Hello everyone, welcome to another talk with Andy and Randy. You'll notice today that Andy's not on screen or Randy. We're doing something a little different today with our midweek talk. I've asked a couple of guests from our church family to come and share their story of how they came to place their faith and trust in Jesus. A lot of people have the notion that Christians, you know, are born that way and they just, all through life, they believed in Jesus. And that's the only reason they really follow Jesus. But both of our guests today have different stories. Why don't you introduce yourselves? Uh, first, we have Mark. Why don't you tell us something about your life? Sure. Uh, my name is Mark Carmel. I work at Rockwell Automation. Uh, I've been attending the Roseville Church for approximately 16 years now. Um, I have a wonderful wife, four children, and two grandchildren. Yeah, that's great. Thanks, Mark. And our other guest, Jason. Hi, I'm Jason Leader. Uh, I work at a cybersecurity company in Waterloo and uh, married with uh, three children, uh, soon to be 13, uh, 11, and 9, and I've uh, been attending here at Roseville since 2011. Excellent. So, Mark, I understand that you didn't grow up as a Christian necessarily. Uh, tell our group that are watching a little bit of your life story. Yes, yes. Uh, so my story started about, well, just over 50 years ago. Uh, I was born and raised in Kitchener, Waterloo. Uh, I had a wonderful family, loving family growing up, great childhood. Um, uh, I would say now, looking back, uh, we were Sunday Christians. Uh, and by that I mean that we did go to church every Sunday. Uh, we wore the right clothes, we uh, sang the right songs, we said the right words. Uh, but honestly, I, I didn't know why I was there. Um, and I continued going to church until I was 14. Uh, at 14, we, uh, there was something called confirmation, uh, which is, uh, I was confirmed. I still remember standing on the stage, but I also recall not knowing why I, I was doing that. Um, after confirmation, I was given the choice. Uh, would I like to continue to go to church or not? Um, I chose not. And, and to be honest with you, uh, that's when things really started to go downhill for me. Uh, at a very early age, I began experimenting with drugs and alcohol. Um, I also became sexually active. And when I was 16, uh, I got my high school girlfriend pregnant. Uh, I had no idea how to deal with that. I ended up running away. I abandoned her and our daughter, um, and things just uh, continued uh, to get worse from there. Uh, more alcohol use, more drug use, and I had many girlfriends. Uh, fast forward, I, um, I did finish school, and I actually uh, got a good job. Um, I was working a lot of hours. Um, I can look back and say that I um, I had actually become a workaholic, uh, and I'll talk a bit more about this later, but I, I can see that I had a void or, or I had something missing in my life that I was trying to fill with many different things, um, and later on in life, even materialistic things. But uh, uh, a few years later, moving forward again, a few years later, I, uh, I got married uh, for all the wrong reasons. But we did have two wonderful children, and when our first child was born, uh, our daughter, um, we had to decide how were we going to deal with childcare. So uh, we both had good jobs, we were making lots of money, we didn't want to give that up. So we decided to hire somebody to take care of our child for us. Uh, that actually worked out quite well. We hired a live-in nanny. Uh, she was excellent. Uh, but after about two weeks with us, uh, she said to me, um, can you can you take me to church this weekend? And uh, I said sure, thinking that's kind of a strange request, but okay. And I knew there was a church in town somewhere down the road. I I said church starts at ten thirty. Uh, please be ready by quarter after. I'll give you a ride. So she was ready. Sunday morning we get in the car. We drive down to the church, and there's literally nobody in the parking lot. Uh, it's 20 after 10, it's Sunday morning, I look around, I'm thinking, what's, what's going on here? So she's looking at me and I said, well, I think there's another church just around the corner. I said, let's go try that one. And uh, 
sure enough, there was lots of people in the parking lot. I could see people going into the church, and uh, and that was the first time I was at the Roseville Church. Other funny thing about that was I wasn't planning to go in. I just planned on dropping her off at the church. But I had this thought in my head that I can't just leave her here with, with these strange people. I, I better go in and keep an eye on things. Uh, so I did. I parked the car. I, I sat in the back of the church. I'm sure my arms were crossed and I probably didn't listen to anything that week. But weeks became months um, and I continued to go with her to church. Uh, and, and I recall one Sunday, um, not long after I had started going there, uh, that actually I was crying during uh, Pastor Randy's message. And I remember thinking to myself, what's the matter with me? What, 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 what's going on? But uh, I look back at it now and, and I know uh, there's people that have hard hearts, people that just don't want to hear, don't want to know God's word. Um, I was definitely one of those people. Uh, but God has a way of breaking through hard-hearted people uh, and he was able to do that with me and, and it's really with his word. So again, fast forward, it's now 2006, it's March, I remember it was March break, it was a very sunny Sunday morning. Uh, I'm sitting in church and I'm not at the back anymore, I've moved up, I've graduated to about halfway up the row of pews and uh, Pastor Randy says, um, that he was going to lead the salvation prayer, which is a prayer to uh, commit your life to Jesus. Uh, and if there's anyone that hasn't said the prayer yet, but they would like to, please bow your head and, and say it with him. Uh, on that day, uh, I did say the salvation prayer with Pastor Randy. Uh, and I, I remember very vividly uh, when I lifted my head um, and the sun was coming in the window and we had stained glass windows in the, in the church at the time. It was like the sun was coming in and beating directly down on me. And, uh, and the, the sense of peace that just washed over me uh, was very overwhelming. Um, and that void that I mentioned earlier that I, I had felt but not really known what it was all my life, uh, that void was gone. Um, and that was the day I, I committed my life to Jesus. I don't want to. I don't want to give the impression or, or let people think that that everything was just rosy after that because it, it, it definitely wasn't. Uh, I was divorced in two thousand nine. Uh, it was a very difficult time. Uh, the repercussions of that I'm still feeling throughout my entire family. Um, but honestly, God has also brought many blessings into my life. Um, and even when the difficult times come, and they have, and I'm sure they will again, uh, that sense of peace has, uh, has always been available to me, uh, simply through quiet times of prayer, uh, thinking about Jesus, reading his word. Uh, this has, has really made a, a huge difference in my life. Um, I like to summarize my story with a little saying, which isn't mine, but I, I do borrow it and I do like it. Uh, and that is that I'm not what I could be, I'm not even what I should be, but I'm not what I was. That's my story. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mark, for sharing that. I like that, that saying that God has worked changes in your lives and you're not the person you used to be. Absolutely. Uh, I'd have to say the same too. Yeah. Jason, how about you? Tell us a little bit about your story. Sure, yeah, I'd be happy to. Uh, so I, as a child, uh, I attended church with my parents and, uh, and my sister. Uh, I don't really recall getting a lot out of it. Um, I would go, but I remember just fidgeting in the, in the pews all the time and just wanting the, the service to end to get outside type of thing. So, um, but I do remember my sister uh, becoming a Christian and, and being baptized, and I just had no idea what any of that meant, and it was more that that was something for her and whatever it was and um, yeah and then by the time I became a teenager in high school uh, I kind of hung out with uh, different people uh, like we all do and and uh, some people I hung out with I tend to get into a little more mischief than others and um, uh, but one friend I, I hung out with uh, he was a Christian uh, he didn't talk about his faith a whole lot 
Uh, but sometimes he'd invite me over to his house and I'd go and, and uh, his mom would talk to me a little bit about uh, Christianity and and uh, I remember clearly uh, her asking me like what would happen if you, if you died where would you go and um, I just said oh I got time to think about that later there's no need for me to worry about that right now you know if I got in a car accident I would still have a time to you know to accept Jesus whatever that is and uh, but I one thing I learned many years later is, uh, is, is them praying for me that I had no awareness of at the time. And uh, I think that um, so sometimes I forget about that, uh, but I think that's an important part of my journey is that I had people praying for me at that time in high school when I was trying to find my way. Um, and uh, separately through a different friend in high school, um, that's really where uh, I started hearing more things about the Bible. Uh, he was sharing, he was openly sharing his faith with, uh, with uh, all of us unbelievers. Most of us in the class were, if not all were unbelievers, or at least there was nobody supporting him in his message. Uh, and I, I was just very intrigued by the things that he was saying. Um, the things that he would share from the Bible were different than the perception I had of the Bible. And it just uh, really challenged me on my thinking and understanding of, of uh, his faith. And, uh, and what struck me uh, the most, I think, uh, through his testimony, uh, similar to the statement that you just had, Mark, about uh, he, he wasn't who, you know, he's changed who he was. And so he would share stories of, of him uh, before becoming a Christian. And, uh, and then he shared, and then I knew, knew what he was like at that time. And it wasn't at all like the stories that he was sharing. And uh, he wasn't bragging about his past, but he was uh, bragging about what God had done in his life and just uh, where he had taken him and, and as, you know, what God can do for you. And uh, I, I remember him sharing stories of him being suicidal and so on, and he did not appear that, that kind of person at all. And uh, so that, I think that's really what uh, impacted me so much uh, at that time. And so that relationship went on for, for years with him and, and him sharing with me and, and uh, he would call me uh, even beyond high school, he would still follow up with me and, and he cared about me and um, I, I always appreciated that about him. And, um, and one thing he shared with me at the time as I started asking him more about his faith and so on and, and uh, started asking him, you know, you know, where do you get started with stuff like this? And, and he said, you know, if you, if you don't know, just, just pray and start asking God. And, and so I would do that from time to time, but not really knowing, uh, you know, what I was doing or what was happening. Um, and it actually, um, it, it took a, a crisis in my life. Um, and it, that crisis was going through uh, a breakup uh, with someone I was engaged to and uh, um, it was really difficult for me at that time and, and uh, uh, it was on the drive home of uh, breaking up uh, uh, with my fiance at the time that I called up to God. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know uh, who to go to or what but I just I just prayed to God and, and, uh, and my prayer was, uh, God, if you're there, I need to know you're there because I'm, I'm so lost and so hurt. And, and, uh, and so it was a, it was a uh, prayer of desperation. And, uh, uh, and it was only a couple of minute drive from, from her house to my house, uh, uh, literally like one to two minutes to drive home. Um, so the prayer happened in between that drive. I drove home and um, it was a Sunday night when all this happened, and I knew that I had to get up in the morning and go to work on Monday. And uh, but I was so lost and just bawling my eyes out and just uh, crying. And and uh, so when I went to set up my alarm clock, um, of all things, uh, obviously it wasn't there was no Faith FM at that time to listen to a Christian radio station. There, it was a, a secular radio station, and uh, I I turned on the radio to set the alarm and. Uh, the, the song Spirit in the Sky was playing on the secular station, which I had never heard it on that station before. And, uh, and that was uh, through music, uh, was the way that God uh, reached out to me. And um, it wasn't just the song uh, playing, um, it, it, that was you know, a part of it, but it was the, uh, the peace, uh, knowing that God had heard my prayer and just this, this piece that came over me, similar to when you were sharing, Mark, about mm -hmm. when you lifted your head and you just had to overcome it. It was the same for me as well. And it was, 
I knew I wasn't alone. I knew that my prayer was answered and there was no doubt about it at all for me. And, uh, and so I just, uh, I gave my life to Jesus at that point. And, uh, uh, and you know, and there was no instant cure or change around in my life, but it was the beginning of a journey with God. And, uh, and listening to him and trusting him and yeah I had all kinds of doubts afterwards like was that real and so on and, and always yes and and uh, just developing that relationship with Jesus at that point and um, yeah going on that journey it's, and it's been an incredible journey and uh, you know the relationship has become so much more since then. That's fantastic thanks guys for sharing your stories I, I found it interesting that in the moment of making a decision of committing your life to Christ, it was different for each of you. Mark was in church and, and followed a prayer that the pastor led. And Jason, you were just on your own, kind of in your car and then at home, and didn't have any idea what words to use. But it was because your heart was reaching out to God and in the right place, he met you there. He accepted you as you were with the amount of knowledge you had. And... Uh, I think that he offers that same thing to our viewers today, that if you're out there right now and you're like Mark or Jason and you haven't taken that step of committing your life to Christ, of accepting his offer to forgive you for anything you've done wrong in your life and to give you a fresh start, to fill you with peace and hope and joy and love, to make his presence real to you and to walk with you through the rest of your life, helping to lead and guide you. And, and fill you with hope and joy and power, you can do that now. You can just maybe follow a prayer similar to what Mark did, but it's not about the words, similar to what Jason said. It's about your heart and wanting God to cleanse you and be part of your life and lead you on from this point forward. So you can just say something like, Jesus, I believe that you came to earth to die for sins and to die for my sin. I ask you to cleanse me and, and forgive me for anything and everything I've ever done that was wrong, that was impure, unholy, that when I wasn't thoughtful or considerate of others, selfish, or even the good things I left undone. Just forgive me for everything, Lord, and fill me with your peace. Fill me with your hope and your presence, with your power and your love. Come into my life and, and lead me from this point on. Help me to learn more about you and just make yourself real to me, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, if you prayed that with us, you've become a child of God and you've started a whole new journey. God promises if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just, he'll forgive our sins, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And uh, boy, we'd love to talk more with you about it. You can find our contact info at rosevilleub.ca rosevilleub.ca. Thanks again, Mark and Jason, for being with us today and sharing your stories. Thank Have you. a great day. God bless.